What's up, folks? Uh, I am here with one of my good friends, Ann Johnson. I'm super stoked. She's in town from Denver, and she brought some damn good beer. She also has a fear that she hasn't told me yet, uh, but she did send like a hint, and I'm pretty, I don't know if I should be concerned or if, uh, if, if I should be excited. Probably both. Probably both. So, shit, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Ann Johnson. Thank you, Stu. I'm so excited to be here. Probably not the one and only because no, there's a lot of Ann Johnsons lot of Ann out Johnsons. there. I actually had to change my middle name when I got married <laughs> because I couldn't be Anne Marie Johnson. It was just too that, basic. There's probably what, like 10,000 uh-huh. Anne Marie Johnsons yeah. in the world. So I'm Anne Evelyn Johnson now. Anne Evelyn. You know what's funny is actually one of the people who has been on this show is named Marie Evelyn. No way. Or Evelyn Marie. I always forget which one's her first and middle name, but she goes by both. So you don't know her very well. I, well, I do. Oh, okay. But I, so here's the funny thing. I always knew her as Marie, but then I think she went into I the professional world. I think that's a really world. messed up thing when people don't, or they're, they don't have like, this is your kind of like cadence of your name mm. and they just throw it at a turn and just pick whichever one they want. Yeah. It stresses me out. Well, it. It throws me off because I actually, she happened to become friends with another group of people that I also knew. Who knew her by a different who name. Who know her as mm-hmm. Evelyn. Yeah. And I'm like, who the fuck is Evelyn? That messes me up. Like, but. It, I feel tricked. Yeah. I, I feel I, like. Mm-hmm. Like, is this. Pick a is, name. Is this, have you been like. Alter ego. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did I, what's, what's the term? I'm trying to think of the term. And it, no, no, no. It was like an MTV show. Punked. No. I'll think of it later. Okay. This is bad radio right now. Yeah, because I'm not good. I, I have that pop culture gap on some of the MTV things. Yeah. Oh, my God. This mm-hmm. is going to kill me. Fuck. Never forget it. Forget it. No, you're good. You're forget good. it. I think we need a beer. Well, we do. We do. But before we get to the beer, so yes. th- this is like the one cadence of the show that even sure. matters. Like, I, I honestly, it doesn't even matter. But but this is what I've sort of held true to. So we've introduced you. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the cool shit you've done recently because okay. you've been to Africa. You've had some interesting experiences. Um, but before we get to the beer, because you brought four badass looking beers. I'm excited. It could be an interesting Wednesday night. I know. Night. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't hang with the Johnsons. Look out. <laughs> the Johnsons hang. Yes. The Johnsons hang. Um, so, but you got to give us a little like hint of like what fear are we looking at before we get before we get into the beer yeah so um this is a fear since i was a little little girl and it comes it stems from where i grew up i grew up on a small farm 40 acres in rural minnesota Mm -hmm. and like i got i was like laura ingles pretty much (laughs) i had my own calf that i got in the spring (laughs) and i fed it like out of a galvanized bucket and did you name it yep named them always and in the fall we shipped them off to get butchered and sometimes we ate them um, but when I was a girl, I had to stand in line or stand out waiting for the bus at the end of our driveway. And at the end of our driveway was a our mailbox that had a pipe that it was mounted to. So it was like a, mm. a hollow pipe. Mm-hmm. And birds would make a nest in that pipe. And okay. so when I was waiting for the bus, barn swallows, which is a type of bird that probably is not the right name for it, but that's what we <laughs> call them as barn swallows. Sounds right. They built a nest in that pipe. And so as I was waiting for the bus, when they had their babies, they were very protective of their babies and they did not like me waiting for the bus. And so they would swoop at me. And it's weird because my mom has the same fear, but it has nothing to do with her waiting for the bus because she was really Laura Ingalls and like went on like a horse buggy <laughs> carriage to school. There was no bus that picked her up. Oh, man. She was like a country girl. Like the long dress and the apron and yeah, all that? Yeah, yeah. bonnet? For, sh- for 100%. Oh, my she's, God. That's well, she's, awesome. she's the same age as Anne Frank for reference. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, she's 92. Holy so cow. So she's real fucking old. Wow. Like, so she had you late. Very late. She was 45 when I was born. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, but she grew up and chickens would like terrorize her and they had chickens growing up and they would chase her and she became afraid of birds. And I think she instilled, we had an owl in our yard one day and we couldn't leave the house. We're, it's like this innate fear of birds (laughs) that I cannot shake. And I, preparing for this, I started thinking about like, what am I afraid of? And I listened to some of your other podcasts and I've, you know, saw the topics. I appreciate that. You're like the one person. (laughs) (laughs) Super fan. Yes. You are the elite. You get a star. (laughs) Um, And, 
and there's a lot of meta topics that have come up with, you know, global warming. Not That's not an example, but like the overpopulation or mm. what happens to you when you die and all these things. And I'm mm. like, that was deep. I'm just not afraid of those things. And I don't really? know why. Mm. I, I just don't have irrational fears. Afraid of the dark. It's like no. not a... Nope. No, no worries. No, I'm, a, I'm by myself all the time. I'm dark. Doesn't bother me. Nothing. Birds scare the motherfucking <laughs> shit out of me. Oh my God. And I don't want them to exist, and I don't feel that they add value. <laughs> it's like a business proposition right now. Yeah, yeah. And what so good I, are you? I, so I found this website recently <laughs> that has conspiracy theorists that they believe that the government killed all the birds and replaced them with robots who are oh, all Jesus watching us. Christ. And that's where birds aren't real. Check it out. Are those the flat earthers? Maybe, but <laughs> birds aren't real is a real thing. It's a website. They sell <laughs> shirts. They sell paraphernalia. And I just ordered one today off of Amazon. I'm like getting my shirt that says birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. But like, I, that's just a dream that I have. That's like not you real. hope that that's the case. Right. I know it's not real. I know it's not rational. And but I don't... Wouldn't, wouldn't it be worse if the birds were government drones? No, because then we could all join together to realize <laughs> that they're bad. It's not just a thing <laughs> that, like, I believe that it would be, oh, we all get to believe this together, that birds are terrible. Oh, my they God. They carry disease. They shit on they're you. Gross. They swoop at you. They attack you. Like, it's... They're gross. They're, they're not... They don't add value in my life. But B, like... What remember good when, are you? Remember when birds? bees used to be bad and you would like, oh my God, kill a bee. There's a bee in here. Yeah. And now we're like. You're not allowed to do that. Now we're like, precious bee. Go I think carry California has made that illegal. Sure. Tur- to- sure. Probably. I'm on board with it. I'm fine. They make the honey. They pollinate the earth with great things. Bees are great. They can still sting you and hurt. <laughs> yes. But they're not a motherfucking bird that's going to shit on my head sure. and poke my eyes out. Oh my God. They made a movie about this for fuck's sake. There's have you seen it? The bird. No. Oh my God. I feel like you have to see it. It's terrifying. That needs to be, you need to watch this no. movie and then come back on the podcast. <laughs> that is my worst nightmare is to watch a movie about birds attacking people. You know no. what's funny too? Is that's the Alfred, Hitch- Alfred Hitchcock. He made it for a speak. reason. Well, so here's the funny thing though. It's like, I have, I've watched the movie and I'm just like, what the fuck is the big deal? Like, what? Because they're birds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're annoying. I got shit on at lunch in high school one time, and I was made fun of for months. What other thing is shit on you? My son. That's fine. <laughs> He's your son. You gave birth to him. He's not going to do that for the rest of his life. I mean, I didn't give birth to him. Uh, well, you, you, popped in, <laughs> you helped in some of this process. Right, he genetically right. is from He's you. Ha- He's half me. Yeah. A bird is going to continue to shit on you. It's never going to grow out of the shitting on you stage. Shit on your car, too. Yes. Fuck up your car. Spoosh, like as soon as you get a car wash, guaranteed. Yes. Right hate, on the right I hate on the hood. them. Yeah. And they're terrifying. I don't like them. They're not cool. Like I actually grew up in a family that used to have parakeets and shit like nope. that. Yeah. Nope. So I kind of got. I, I think I got used to it, but I also realized how disgusting they were. Yeah. And it you would have to bite clean me. Their cage. It would bites bite me all the time. Well, like, I mean, it's a little beak. Unacceptable. But that thing can bite pretty good. Like, yeah. they've got, like, dinosaurs. They come from dinosaurs. Like, yeah, that should be an indicator. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, all of them. They're more closely related to birds than lizards. That's what they've, like, recently found that out. That is something I did not know. Yeah. Yeah. Makes they, sense. they actually think, like, velociraptors had feathers. I'm on board with dinosaurs, though. Well, I mean, I you saw might Jurassic not be Park. anymore. Yeah. Even I think the, your opinion's got to change now. Maybe. I, I'm on board with that. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. not dinosaurs. Uh, you're out. Yeah, and I would say that it's it's more than just like the fear and the hatred of them. It kind of is encompassing of a control thing too, where I don't have any control over birds. Not at all. Where not you can train close. a dog, you can train a kid, you can train all these things. Birds, I just don't believe you can even train them. I don't know, like those people who fly falcons and shit like that. That's pretty cool. But that's but that's not really training no. as much as like I'm just gonna feed you. Yeah. And like I can control your that's, food. Yeah, and that's but nothing that, thing, that I have an interest in. I could either. turn on you in a yeah. dime. Yeah. I could tear your throat out. Yeah, I have Which I have is a horrifying. few more theories on them in general, but I just overarching when I come to think of I mean, I'm afraid of other irrational things. Um, control tends to be a theme in my life, so maybe birds are mm. in that wheelhouse. Because they're flying around. They're yeah. flying around, just taunting you. Really, mm-hmm. they're just looking at you like, "Fuck in." And look, I, at, they can hang out me. electrical wires. Who else can do that? That's not monkeys. Yeah, monkeys aren't my favorite though either. Don't tell Ken because he is obsessed with all primates. 
<laughs> he would like to hire. That's like his bir- his fiftieth birthday wish is for an orangutan to jerk him off. Oh my god! Yeah, he could be a, a guest on here in a heartbeat. <laughs> I need Ken to. I need to meet Ken first <laughs> yes, of all because you've you told me so many damn good stories. He's my favorite person. I'm obsessed with him, and he does. He the thing with him, he delivers. Well, it's a good you thing you married him. Yeah, you can't you can't build somebody up so much, and then somebody else meets him, and they're like, oh my god, why did she build him up so much? No, he yeah. delivers. I've seen that happen before. It's like, eh, they're no. all right. No, he he definitely delivers when. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Kenny J isms out in this uh, world. Yeah, <laughs> that's. 50th birthday. Yeah, only four more years. It's coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a known fact. The Minnesota tribe of ours are all waiting there in anticipation. There's a countdown on. I'd be afraid, though, because those things are strong. Oh, yeah. There's, that's a dangerous proposition. I'm not going to let it happen. <laughs> are <laughs> Trust you sure? Me, yes. Maybe like a baby one. Maybe. <laughs> but then, that's creepy. But then that's, that's like, like child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're, we're trudging in some dangerous yes. territory. Let's walk this back to the yes, beer. Thank let's you. Go, thank let's, you, let's, thank let's, you. let's crack one. Yes. Um, I think we pretend, should start. <laughs> pretend like none of that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we don't edit the show, Went, folks. <laughs> yeah. Went down a rabbit hole there. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling that's going to happen a lot. I think we should start with the original Juicy Banger. So I brought a couple beers from our local brewery back in Denver. Is that, that this guy? Yep. So a little history. Do you want? You know, do you want to? Do you want to talk about it? Yes. Yeah. No. Let's let's hear the background. So Station Twenty Six. Let you hold it. You yeah. Can Station Twenty Six Brewing. Um, their motto is "For You, For All." And mm-hmm. Ken and I two years ago moved to Denver from Minnesota. We, on a moment's notice, it was June third. He got a call. Hey, you guys are moving to Denver. You need to be there Monday, June fifth by Jesus. noon. And June fifth. Two days. Two days. Good. Less than forty eight hours. And. Um, he went it was terrible he was working 20 hours a day he was living out of a hotel and fourth of july was coming up and i said i'm booking a ticket you you're gonna have a tuesday off in the middle of the week you can't fly home for it but you have a day off and i said i'm just gonna come to denver and we're gonna check it out just i'll be there i can like at least we're in the same state together Mm -hmm. for like a week at a time yeah so as I was there and by myself, I'm working from a hotel. I'm working from a double tree, actually, with the cookies. Mm, but, yeah, the best, the, best cookies that you just shared with my son. Yes. Yeah. And I think he ate that whole thing I in go- like two minutes. I know. And they wanted more. I, I should have brought six. <laughs> um, no, I'm glad you didn't. So I Googled breweries, as Denver is known for, and there happened sure. to be one that was like four blocks away from the hotel we were staying at. And it was the 4th of July. And I was like, hey, I found a brewery. We went to Golden that day. We bummed around, came back, and I was like, let's go to this brewery, check it out. We went in, and it's an old fire station. Mm. Um, It's super cool. There's like the walls are lined with fire hoses Uh, and fire patches. There is a pole, all of the above. And I met the coolest girl ever. Her name was Hans. Sorry, Hans, for like um, exposing your secrets. Her real name is Hannah, but she goes by Hans. <laughs> and but I just thought she was the coolest person ever, and we had the best time. Mm. At the end of the night, she and we told her all of our story. We talked to her forever. There was only a few of us in there, and she, we just fast friends immediately. Yeah. And she at the end of the night, we got our bill, and it said regulars discount. Mm. Night one, the night Johnsons are one. in. Damn. Yeah. And Making I was inroads. Like, we can do this. We can live here. Mm. And we credit Station 26 to us being able to adapt and acclimate to Denver. So, Dude, that was like your welcoming party. Yes. That it's amazing. Is... And it's become our second home. We're there all the time. We're there Thanksgiving, Christmas, any special event. Anytime people come to town, we're at Station. They know us. They know that we're bringing friends in, all this stuff. So their flagship beer is this Juicy Banger IPA. And I brought two versions of it because right now they also have the fresh hop out. Mm. So I think we'll start with the original juicy. The original, okay. And so then we'll have a little taste test comparison between the juicy original and the fresh hop. Let's do it. And um, and while you're pouring that, by the way, I just want to call out all the other guests who didn't have a cool ass story uh, like that because that's the whole purpose. I want to know like the beer that helped change your life or so, it, like something that left an impression at least. And that's I was actually more excited about the beer portion of your podcast than I was about well, the fear. Me too. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> yeah. Beer the, is the, like... The fear is just the conversation piece. Yeah. And the beer is what really brings people together. I, when you talk about beer, you talk about memories, you talk about what you like about it. The beer is great beer. Don't get me wrong, and you'll find out really quick. It smells quick. good. It's really it smells, good beer. Oh, yeah. yeah that it, smells like a good it's IPA. Bomb. Um, 
but it's also the stories that go along with it and the people and mm. if the people that work there weren't as cool as there and Pete Hans has since left I'm still really good friends with her she lives in Brooklyn mm. but like we still text all Damn. the time and like we're gonna go see her next spring she comes back oh you guys are like legit friends yeah like, you, that's one thing it's, uh, thank you for saying that because it's when people talk about friends and how they know each other yeah we have a lot of friends who are in the service industry that, that people will say, how do you know them? And I'm like, oh, they work at the brewery that we go to. And immediately it is completely like thrown out that we're not real friends. Mm. And I'm like, no, no, there's yeah. validation in this. These yeah. people are our family. They're our good friends. We hang out with them outside of their job. It's not that right. we only are friends with them because they work at a place. They're, uh, that drives me 100% They're crazy. Still like humans. Like at the end of like, yes. holy shit, just because, you know, they're serving a beer and I'm hanging out drinking the beer what? does not change the entire dynamic. And how do you know people in general? Like, you know people from places that you go, things that you enjoy, you have things in common, you like to talk about the same types of things. And it just happens that we have met people who work at establishments that we go to, but become our friends. Yes. It's no different than if you worked with them or if you met them at the grocery store. It's like the only way I make friends nowadays. Yeah. I'm like, I'm at that age now where I don't get to meet new friends. Well, like, no, you're unless not. Unless I'm at like work. Yeah, and you're not typically, we don't have little kids anymore. <clears throat> mm. So we're not having play dates where we're going to meet mm. parents of, you know. Oh, that'll be coming for me soon. Yeah. yeah play that's dates. Actually, a lot Did of our Did you enjoy that? <laughs> it was not that as much as the sports. So once our mm. kids got involved in sports and they were in that kind of middle school age range. Mm. Your entire life is around your kids because they can't drive themselves. But they have a real life. And they have a real life. Oh, and God. you are, Lame. you find that group of parents. <laughs> and we found our group in Minnesota where it was like, we ended up going on vacations with them. Oh, They're sh- still really good friends of ours. And like my best friend back in Minnesota, Rhonda, she, her daughter and my daughter, same age, played sports together. They don't even really hang out anymore, but Ron and I are besties, you know? Dude, you, like, make friends. Yes. Like, that's... No, but that's all... Well, hey, before... Cheers. cheers, Let's uh, let's take a sip of this. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, that is Station 26 Brewing for you for all. That is fucking good. And... That is really good. I know. And it doesn't get the accolades I think it deserves. It is on tap at a lot of places in Denver. Is it? Um, It's not wildly distributed outside of the Denver area, but you do find it on tap at a lot of the local bars Mm. in town. They do have a distributor. So you can find it outside of just the brewery. Do you have any idea like what the uh, alcohol percentage is on this? I think it's seven. Yeah. It tastes like it's up there. If I'm getting really technical. Well done. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. You brought this all the way from Denver. That is dedication. Um, hold on, I checked a bag for you, dude. You che- <laughs> I checked. I'll a cheers bag. you again for that. That is well done. <laughs> no, thank you. And I even switched flights, and so my bag ended up getting here before I did. Oh, so it's just so the beer so, was here before you. Yeah. It's, yeah. I got a text in flight saying your bag has arrived. <laughs> I was like, well, that's not the plane that I was on anymore. Well, you said you took it off and put it back on a different flight. <laughs> you were just kidding. <laughs> Delta, you tricked me because it got there before I did. Oh, boy. Well, at least it didn't get there after you because mm. you can't leave this fallen Correct. soldier behind there. Correct. You got you, Yeah. Um, and I have I've kind of had a lot of experience with traveling with beer. Um, have you been to Boston? Never. No. Okay. So... East Coast has a lot of good beer. Boston has some great beer. and New York's got a lot of good beer. They do. Brooklyn specifically. Brooklyn's good. Yeah. Yes. Brooklyn's got, got a good beer. Um, uh, some of our best friends, um, I'm going to give a shout out, Kish and Kelly. Mm-hmm. They um, Kelly had an opportunity with General Mills to move to Boston. And we're not typically people who go travel to see friends. Mm. But they're almost more like family to us. Mm. And so we flew out to Boston and spent, you know, four or five days with them and got to know this Wachusets. Um, Wachusets. Wachusets, which is out of Massachusetts. Presumably. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
they tricked my husband into thinking that when you ordered a Wachusett, they had the best beer ever. It's called, it's a blueberry ale. Mm. We like fruit forward beers. Just, okay. heads, just spoiler alert. I, I generally don't, but I've been, I've had my mind changed a couple really of times. It's really mild. It's yeah. not, their uh, station has a, t- has a uh, tangerine cream that's really bomb too. That's mm. so good. Anyway, they tricked Ken into that when he ordered a blueberry Wachusett at a bar in Boston, that he needed to do a hand gesture that was almost like a, um, like you you have your hand flat and you have to like make it a point and say Wachusett, <laughs> and so they convinced him that that was like to be very East Coast that sure. he had to say Wachusett okay. and like do the hand motion, and like an Italian mafioso. Yes. Like, so we became obsessed with that. And at the time I was working for General Mills and I had to fly out east. Um, I had a customer out there and I had one and only in New York and I had another in um, AG Manchester, mm. which for grocery nerds out there, they're really, really small, very, <laughs> very small customers. But it gave me the opportunity to fly out there. And whenever I was there, I could get the which, blueberry with two sits and I would have mm. to fly back with it. So I got real savvy on flying with beer. Do you ever like sneak it onto the plane? Nope. No, no, Just I don't. It. Well, because never broke on you. N- no, I've had mm. one beer leak. I've had oh, a yeah? growler leak, and it was yeah. A- growlers are dangerous. I feel like taking a growler on a flight would no, be no growler like these. Oh, crow- it yeah, leaked? it really? leaked around the seal because you know how they're like yeah, yeah, the yeah. open can and they put <clears> the lid on, yeah, and they must not have like sealed it correctly because it just leaked. Losers. But for the most part, I I usually brought like twelve packs of bottles back in my little carry on, but I checked the bag and mm. never had an issue. Yeah. with yeah. glass bottles yeah with glass bottles like my wife and i went to napa and almost every winery we went to was like yeah let us just ship it to mm-hmm. you because you're gonna break it it's like all right i, I guess i should have just been asking you the whole time yeah i've flown with wine too and typically i wrap that in clothes the beer i leave it in the 12 pack and just mm. pack clothes kind of in it but the wine is a little bit more you want to like wrap some sweaters around that i yeah. guess yeah but wine bottles just, are really thick so they don't mm. usually break that's a hard side suitcase. Did you see the um, that gigantic beer that Amanda got me mm-hmm. posted on Facebook? I did. That is going to have to be a podcast at some point. Yeah, we've got to finish the whole thing. Well, that how, what's the percentage on that? It's monstrous. I is think it over thirteen? No, I think it's like ten. Is it a barrel aged? Um, yes, I think it is. It might be closer to. It might, it might be, up be up there. Twelve. I yeah. don't. I don't remember. She but actually you, gave it to me after doing a podcast, and I was already a little drunk. Dude, you also though, you can drink a bottle of wine. It's seven hundred fifty milliliters, right? The bottle. No, I think it's bigger. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was it's, gonna say it's, a it's like of wine. it's like the size of my torso. Oh well, it's I mean, so it's like a, it's like a that's a real big. What's that called? Okay. <laughs> a magnum. <laughs> what are you trying to say? The magnum. <laughs> that's the word I was looking for. I am not finding words today. I think I need I got more you. beer. It's fine. Yeah, no, more beer. More beer will help. Um, loosen up the brain a little. Because you can drink a bottle of wine by yourself, and sure. that's like thirteen. Done it many times. Yeah, and you're fine. Yeah, yeah but I think it's. I think it's like twice the size. And so like 1.5. Yeah. Well, but if you share it with somebody, you're each having a bottle of wine. True. But we're also talking about like an hour to an hour and a half time period. Again, so it's... don't fuck with the Johnsons. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've met my damn match here <laughs> yeah. today. Like anyone who stepped into this ring, this little arena mm-hmm. of mine, um, I could I could probably put to shame. Except mm-hmm. I would say Ty. Ty was on the yeah, show. Yeah, Ty. Ties, ties, I can ties throw a monster. Him down. Yeah. Oh, he can throw him down. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. I actually, um, I didn't tell you this ever before, I don't think, but did he ever tell you I ran into him at Trader Joe's? No. <laughs> I, so, feel like, I feel like there's a... Like, it was one of those nights where I was like, I had a couple drinks at Todd's. <laughs> and I was like, I should probably drink more. So I walked sure. over to Trader Joe's. Ooh, and get I get the like, Trader Jose? Uh, no, I get the cans. Well, Co- have you ever had the Trader Jose's? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. But I get the I get the cans. They're called Uncanny. It's little cans of wine. <laughs> it's called Uncanny. Yeah. and um, That marketing person they, feels so good about themselves. They, they fit in your pocket. <laughs> great for taking this trip. But I've had a couple drinks, and I'm like, roll into Trader Joe's, and mm. there is Ty and his gal, yep. like, with their little basket of organic who knows what. I and like, being healthy. Being healthy. I chill. thought you were going to tell me you had a... Like a just a crate full of beer. No, but I'm like just strolling in to buy some canned wine. <laughs> you're just like you're just feeling good, yeah. just like cruising. Probably had your shades on. I'm just. like, damn it! Why did I have to run into somebody I know? As I'm just like 
crush and cans of wine at a Trader Joe's. Did he, he's and like, I'm hey, going, what's this uncanny I'm over literally here? going back to my hotel room by myself to watch <laughs> like old episodes of Grey's Anatomy as I crush some canned wine. You know what? I, I got to say this. I, you know, you know how people like to say like, well, you know, the true sign of an alcoholic is when you drink alone. I'm like, Absolutely that's not. fucking bullshit, dude. I am great company and I like to keep it to myself sometimes. It, I, some of my it's favorite It's relaxing. Nights. Oh, shit. When I, I if, if I've had a long week, mm-hmm. Amanda go to bed, Jackson go to bed. It's wonderful. Have a six pack of beer, just sitting in the fridge. Yeah. Play some video games. Yep. Just sit back, have nothing to do. Oh. I think the other thing with that, I would, I would abide more by like, the, does it impact your daily life? And you know, like just, yes, fair. It's not impacting. It's not taking away from anybody else. I'm not. I'm not withholding time spent with friends or family or abandoning some small child. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, I, Jackson's alone in the house right now, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I just don't abide by some of those. I think that there's a lot of things in this world that we. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go. I'm going to go deep on. Okay, you. let's do it. This is what we're here for. So, um, typically how people generally measure if they're doing a good job is by somebody else doing a bad job. Mm, and so, so like someone to feel better about yourself yes. then. And so if they say, um, I don't ever drink alone. So then therefore I don't have a problem. Mm where that person drinks alone so they have a problem it makes themselves feel better oh it's sure. putting somebody else yeah, down in sure. order to, and it's a, it's a rule that somebody uses yeah, yeah to justify their own actions they might be going out to the bar every single night and staying till bar close right and pounding shots and doing whatever they weren't alone yeah they weren't alone so it's they fine alone. yeah and so it's just a, yeah, it's just issue. like a barometer of justification that mm, some people like to use and, yeah and that's not limited to alcohol that people def, g- generally use that it's you know what like else do they use it in like religion is a big one. Oh, really and so like 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 how? i go to church every sunday they don't therefore i'm a better person oh I, okay or okay. i I take my coat off as I go into church to so show off my Sunday best, and I'm not a I'm not a garbage person who would like. Um, or um, another one that I have is like, I use the right utensils at like mm. a proper dinner, and so therefore I'm more, I'm a much more couth than somebody else. Mm. And at the end of the day, we're all still going to put food in our mouth, and we're all going to eat. It's going to be fine whether you <laughs> use chopsticks or a spoon. It doesn't really matter. Yes. Yes. I totally agree. There's just a lot of things that are it's like, if I do this, I am better than the person who does it a different way. Yeah. That's that's interesting. And, and I think that that's probably really valid because, I mean, people... It's like having a benchmark, right? Yes. Because you can't... It's hard to just... Like, here's the thing. It's ingrained in us. It's ingrained in us because we have to find something to judge against. Yes. Because if it's just against yourself, well, what are you comparing to? Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing that, like, I, I've i never struggled with, whether I, I've had a shitty day or I've had a shitty week or, a, you know, I've had what or a good day or a good week or whatever. I've never had a problem. Shout out to my parents. I think they did a good job. Huh? Uh, I, I've never had a problem just feeling good about myself. Like... And I know other people struggle with it, and I don't think it's their fault. But, like, but I think when you have a little bit more just, like, I feel good about myself, then you have less of the... So you're saying you had better parents than other people. Yes. That's exactly what (laughs) I'm saying. Cheers to mom and and dad. And, by the way, it's my dad's birthday today. (gasps) Happy birthday, Papa Hawk. Yes. Oh. I think they passed... Actually, his last name is Clark. He's my stepdad. Okay. But he was... Sorry, I didn't mean to put him in a box. No, he's good. He he got it all his life growing... Or growing... When I was growing up, because he started dating my mom when I was seven. Oh, shout out. And he was an amazing dad. And uh, and we played baseball and football. So, like, all the kids would come up to him and be like, hey, Mr. Hawk. And he wouldn't correct him. Like, he was just like, no. My heart is, like, exploding. That's awesome. It's his 70th birthday today. Happy birthday. Cheers to Papa Clark. Yes. Papa Clark out in Hawaii right now. Mm -hmm. Living the dream. I think he passed Lisa in the air. I know. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, shout out to stepdads though in general I can't imagine what it's like to come into a kid's life mm-hmm. Ken is my daughter's step um, stepdad and yep. man 
it was it's a rough couple of years on that like beginning part. Mm. It pays How off. How old were they when? Seven and five. Oh, so same age. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, it was right around six and four, or seven and five, right in that kind of wheelhouse, and there's definitely the challenging years in every kid growing sure. up. Sure. But it's like. We, my girls are coming out to Denver next week. So my girls both mm. live in Minnesota still because they're grown ass adults and they don't have to live with me anymore. No. But that's the best. That ever means known. you're a good mom too. Oh, it's the you best ever well. that they come and like stay <laughs> and hang out. And we have so much fun. Yes. Ugh. Yeah. Are you uh, are you willing to tell the story of your daughter? Or oh, do you yeah. do you do you want? You don't have to because you uh, told it's a wild story. It is a wild story. And it's story. also emotional. My heart was beating. Yeah. So. Um, it's one of those things where kids, you're always going to worry about them and you always like, you want them to be safe. And this kind of goes into a little bit. Um, I have a, I have a theory on things always work out. Mm -hmm. Everything works out. I have, I like that. I'm a very, um, positive person in the sense of like, it's okay. I'm not going to stress about, maybe that comes with the fear thing too, is that I don't, I'm not afraid of things because I always believe that. I don't have a belief in some higher power yeah. making it happen. I just believe that like innately good things will happen at somehow or they work yeah. out the way that they're supposed to. I, I I'm on board with that. Wholeheartedly yes. agree. And then something happens like this weekend where um there was uh, the fear of everything that I've ever believed in was gone for a, an hour. And it, I'll, I'm I'll getting keep stressed it. out yeah, right now I because know. I already know where this is going. <laughs> Everything there is a it happy ending. Doesn't help ending. that it's like 100 it's degrees fine. in this booth right now. It's a happy ending, and she's <laughs> fine. But my younger daughter had a day. She had a very celebratory day. It's good. And you she had celebrate. a blast. She's 21. She's young, hot, That's the single. Age to do it. You got to do she's it. She's had a hot girl summer. Instagram <laughs> official on um, that hot girl summer. Is she status. an influencer yet? Is she uh, is she getting brands paying her for uh, um, she, to hold she, their little yeah, products? <laughs> she has held out so far. I think she's holding out for The Bachelor to uh, contact yeah. her. Okay, good. Um, good. Long term goals. Don't sell out too soon. No, exactly. Yeah. Got to keep it keep it fresh for that. <laughs> um, and she made a decision late at night to um, go home with somebody. And I, d- I don't know how well she knew him or anybody knows him. Mm. And as they got to his place... The story that I got seven hours later was that um, she was in a fake Uber. Oh, my God. Where the guy she was going home with tried to get her out of the car and had her phone and her belongings and reached to get her. And as he was trying to get her out of the fake Uber, the fake Uber sped away with her and (sighs) took my daughter. She was taken. I'm already stressed. I'm stressed again felt like Liam Neeson in oh, Taken where I was going to go bust some shit. You like tell him. I was going to get on a line? plane. I was going to do something. I, was I gonna, will find you. Yeah, I was, <laughs> was going to do it. And um, she, they called the cops. Cops were involved. There was, uh, there was a picture of a person of interest. There was going mm-hmm. to go on social media. They were trying to get videotapes from the bar that she had left. It was like the most dramatic, awful uh, kind of scenario you could possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. And Duluth, Minnesota has a little bit of a history. It's a college town, but it has a history of, you know, college students go missing. College, it happens all the time. Mm. College the students. Great White North. Yeah. Yes. Um, Hoser. Hey. Um, <laughs> it's Canada, isn't yeah. it? I'm well, sorry. Well, that's close enough. For a Southern Californian, it's all the same up there. It is. It's... And Duluth is actually very close to Canada. So it's, they do say things like that. And, um, her roommate was a absolute badass. Shout out Emily Landry. Nice work. She dealt with the well cops. Done. She was calm. She inf- she was informative. Um, she was definitely doing all the things that were being proactive and trying to stay positive mm. and trying to keep me calm. Trying to just like keep everybody calm and think positively. It's impossible to stay calm. It was it. impossible. Good I was, for her for trying. Oh, you know. and um, long story short is that we found her about an hour later, and she was fine. And she had, in her drunken state, made a decision that she no longer wanted to go home with the guy that she started to go home with. Good for her. And decided to go to a different person's house. And she knew that fake Uber driver who, um, in the one guy's head, sped away with her to take her away from 
society was actually <laughs> taking her away actually from... Actually saving her? Yes. <laughs> from a decision that she was probably making that wasn't so great. Uh, and I, I think all parties involved had good intentions. Sure. But when you say things like a fake Uber driver took your daughter... Red flag. Yep. Yeah, that causes a lot of panic. You want to talk mm. about things you're afraid of. That was terrifying. The most terrifying hour I could possibly... I'm... I'm surprised I'm able to hold it together and not cry because I can feel myself like quivering. Like I, I'm fuck. quivering. Yes. When you first told me the story, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I am going to have a panic attack right now. Yeah. And so you want to talk about fear. Like that's I think that's any parent's fear, though, where you're oh, like yeah. something bad happening. And I actually told my friend Rhonda this. I said. I have such a positive attitude about things and I always think everything works out that I was mad at myself because I was like, oh my God, I have been living this positive, everything works out and I fucked my karma mm. because I really believed everything was oh going to work. Oh my God, you found a way to blame yourself. <laughs> Yes. For this situation that, <laughs> that you had, had nothing, nothing control. to do with. Talk about a control freak. Oh, huh? my God. Holy I got shit. It. <laughs> you really do have a control problem, I didn't you? realize that until recently. So, birds, watch the fuck out, because Ann Johnson might be coming for coming you. Coming to fuck you up, she birds. She is coming for you. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to find a way to control you. And if it is true that birds don't exist so that they've been controlled by the government, I am going to apply <laughs> for a job to be in control of the fucking birds. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> <laughs> the people who don't believe birds exist also are sure that there is a flat earth yeah. and that flu vaccines are yep. are bad. Well, vaccines vaccinations in general. In general. Yep. And uh, and we never went to the moon. And the earth is only 2000 years old. And that's right. Well, I think it's are they giving it credit for 4,000 years now? Maybe. I think Whatever. they may have given like an it's, extra it's in the th- it's 2,000 in, before Christ. They don't have enough zeros. Uh, one sure. way or yeah, the other. They're, they're missing an, like a, uh, an exponent. Yes. <laughs> they're missing, they're missing an entire few, yeah. period of time, which actually, this is a good segue. They're basically bad at math. That's um, Great segue into, I know you talked about that. Um, you wanted to bring up the fact that I just got back from Africa. Yes. One place that we went in Africa. So cool. That I did not expect. So back up a little bit really quick we went to um, Rwanda and Tanzania Mm. and I am a very planful person I plan everything out I have spreadsheets on spreadsheets on spreadsheets I have every dollar that I it's true and I know this because we actually planned our last um, team trip Mm -hmm. and I did absolutely nothing and (laughs) And I had spreadsheets (laughs) and Ann was like Stu we gotta meet and talk about this and then eventually I think you just put it together and my one contribution I think was hey let's go to a food hall yeah (laughs) that was it that was the one thing you gave me a couple options and then I just picked one that's right we did it we did it (laughs) yes we did which is fine I love planning like I appreciate the fact so much that you let me because if you would have tried to take it over from me I probably would have been annoyed never would have happened no no Um, so I planned this trip to Africa. It was like a, almost a two-year planning adventure. And I knew we were going to Rwanda to see the gorillas. And then we were going to Tanzania to do a safari. And I had all these things planned out. And on the itinerary for Tanzania, our safari guy said, optional, go to Old Pai. I don't even know if I'm saying it right or if I'm spelling I'm gonna it right. I'm going to guess no, but, no. you know, close enough. Old Pai, I, I Old Pai. It sounds like Old Pie to me. That's all I can tell you. I'm gonna, we have one listener from Rwanda who's like, what the <laughs> fuck is she talking about? It's Tanzania. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. See, <laughs> yeah, I already fucked that up, right. too. Yeah. God damn it. And I didn't know what it meant, and it just said $36 a person extra. And we got there, and he's like, hey... Do you want to do this? And we're like, sure, we're game. At this yep. point, I'm I'm letting go, and I'm like, let's do this. Add on, be adventurous. I'm adventurous, so I'm very mm-hmm. adventurous. I make a plan. It doesn't have to follow exactly that. I just put a plan in place, and I'm flexible to a certain extent on how that works out. Not totally, but... So when you say flexible, mm-hmm. plans change? Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. So my wife is... No, nope. I'm, I'm okay with change and I'm okay with, so people say like, can say, we don't have any plans. We're, we're just going. That's me. And I'm like, that's me. Well, but I have a plan. It's mm-hmm. just in my head and I haven't told you. Mm. And I think my wife has started doing that to me. Yeah. Oh my God. That's brilliant. She, and he says, I don't even know. He says like, he goes, oh my God, babe, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, eh, you would have bitched about it for a week if I would have told you. And now I only have to listen to you bitch for an hour. <laughs> so you're fine. So we get to... We don't even know what it is. And we get to Old Pie. I'm just going to call it Old, old pie. pie. It's not It's right. like an Old Pie. Got left out on the sill. 
And I'm not going to explain this very well, but I can tell you it is an archaeological site where four of the classifications of human have been found. So there's uh, five classifications. It's like the cradle, isn't it? Like it's like yes. uh, it's like yeah, okay. And so I know it's what you're in about. Tanzania, and it is like the Lucy. Yes, the species. Lucy, species. Like three feet tall or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have a picture. Oh, of Ken- I'll show you later. And oh, there's so like cool. they found um, Lewis Leakey and Mary Leakey. They lived in these like tiny, tiny little, little kind of yurts almost, if mm. you will, and they tirelessly for 28 years like dusted off shit out that they found out in this thing where I'd be like it's a goddamn rock (laughs) and they're like no this was a tool Mm. like this kind of level of craziness and good for them it was absolutely fascinating and like something completely unexpected that I expected to see animals and I expected to see interesting people and like the Maasai are very interesting people to me I did not expect to go upon this like worldly journey up through time of mm. like this place in Africa has been around you want to we're talking about like the age of the earth yes. and there was like a, a cast of footprints that they had like taken that they found that were three and a half million years old that oh might be wrong God. but it was somewhere around there it was in the millions of years old wow. and the skulls that they found were you know anywhere between like one and three million years old and I just wanted to shake every human out there who doesn't believe and be like go to old pie because yeah. you can see really old shit and it's real but it, Science, know, people. Science. It's it's not only is it science, though, but, like, there's a pretty good chance that, like, your lineage somehow traces back to yeah. one of those things. Well, yes. Like Lucy, right? Yeah, w- like, right. Like, that's fun. Like, she, she I, think, I don't I don't remember how far back she goes, but, like, she was the she was the big one yeah. that they discovered. And they were like, yes. this person was, like, three feet tall. Yeah. Basically a monkey. Do you know why she was called like, Lucy? No. Ooh, fun fact for you. Okay. I learned yeah, a lot. Let's hear it. Yes. So they found Love fun fact. They they found a so Lucy is a term for that particular time frame of uh, Lucy is not one thing. Lucy is a like a Homo erectus, Homo sapien. All the Lucy yeah. is the original. But there was a there was the one that they found that they were like this yeah. is Lucy. Right, but then it became the classification for that mm. time frame or okay. that like era of Lucy. And the reason I'm going to get the story wrong. We're not going to fact check. It's going to be we're fine. We're not fact checking. No, no. But, I need to get like a screen in here that we can like have someone like Google, pull up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like. Anne is wrong 98% yeah. no, of the time. No, this is this is mostly right. <laughs> it's mostly right. What happened was that somebody found them this like tiny Lucy human mm-hmm. and the other people didn't believe that they found them and they were too busy listening to the song the Beatles Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. No shit. No shit. Yeah. And oh so Oh my. They were like, "Oh, what Which so, is named after LSD, right? Like that's the whole Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so she's a druggie. She's a drug addict. She's the original she druggie. She's the queen pen. Yes. She's the queen pen of, of, hike, of LSD. Yes, psychedelics began. Well, but three psychedelics years. are cool though, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. No. You don't want heroin, you don't want opiates, but All psychedelics natu- natural that's, only. That's right on. Do not do anything synthetic, only natural. God, dude, synthetic drugs are fucking crazy these days. Terrifying. I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole because I also no. don't know enough. So I, I would sound foolish, but I, I know, know enough to know that They're bad. you don't want to fuck around with that no. stuff. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so, so so your Africa trip, sorry, derailing. Or do you want to... Oh, let's fucking crank this beast. Yeah. You so we're this? on to beer two. And yes. So this is also the Juicy Banger IPA. However... This is the virgin, virgin oh. version that is um, sweet beer. made with the fresh hops. It's so innocent. And so fresh hop, which for all you listeners out there who are beer snobs will you know this be. already, um, it's it's going to be a little less hoppy. Yeah. Because it's, it's that thrown fresh, in late, right? Yeah. The hops are thrown in late in the brewing process. But they're also a. Why am I even talking like I know? I think that they're well. Not your best, they're, your they're, best friends are brewers, apparently, or they work at the brewery. They haven't been dried out, so they're like fresh yeah, yeah, hops yeah. that have not been dehydrated. Like, de- like, 
you think about it like throwing in fresh oregano as opposed to they have dry hopped correct which is like that's probably like yeah. you're drinking a pine cone right so you there's know. a little more greenness to this yeah. this one tastes like the grass is still there on yeah. the pine cone yeah yeah we sound like that doesn't we make any fucking sense no but I don't know is, what the shit I'm doing. It is really good. And um, I would say that I actually prefer the fresh hop over the... Oh, you've been holding out. Are, well, that's why we start. you got to start with oh, okay. the foundation. Setting lower expectations. No, you got to start with the cla- good classic beer. original has to okay. always be the first. Yeah, okay. You can't just that's dive fair. into the uh, line extensions. Should I, should I crack this back? Yes, one? crack it out. All right. Oh, there we go. And I've been talking so much that I'm a little behind you. So you go ahead and pour yourself some and I'll catch up. Um, It'll happen, though. I uh, I have a tendency to just drink really fast. I have to like generally, and I don't do this in the podcast booth and I probably should, but I like drink a water in between beers. Otherwise, I'll have six beers in like an hour. Like I'll just crank through them yeah. because I just, it's like a, it's, it's not even like I'm trying to drink. It's but more it's like, there. well, it's more like, it's just like, it's almost like, an, like I want to say like a nervous tick or just like a habit. It's like the beers in my hand, just, you know, my sentence is over, you know, and it so, so just sort of goes. Yeah. One of the drunkest I, New Year's Eve I had was, um, uh, we went up for a happy hour and then we came home and we had a whole bunch of teenagers down in the basement. And so I didn't go down there because there was teenagers down there. And my, Ken got a phone call from somebody and went out on our deck and was talking. So I was just like sitting, worrying about teenagers in the basement, worry about why he's on the phone. And next thing you know, I was like, oh, my God, I think I might need to go to bed. It's like <laughs> 1030. But like I just was sitting here and I drank so fast because I didn't take a minute to talk to anybody. <laughs> just sitting there doing nothing. Yes. Yeah, it happens. It, but I wasn't it, watching TV. I was just waiting for him to get off the phone, and I thought, it, yeah. Kick, yeah, you have nothing else to do. Yeah. You have your phone? I did, but it was long enough ago that there wasn't as many things on my phone. You have, like, some good apps to look at. Or, right. Yeah. It was no, only Facebook. I don't think there was even Instagram. But you know, the fucked up thing for me, though, is, like, it's it's the same for any other beverage. And, like, Amanda mm-hmm. will tell you, if I you get a Starbucks... You should never drink... But you should also never drink whiskey, probably. No, th- exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because, so I rarely drink alcohol. Same. And if I do, I have to, like... I mean, hard alcohol. Clearly, this is a beer show. I drink alcohol. Right. But but, um, but if we get Starbucks, right? Yeah. So, Amanda, Pound so there's, a, there's a Starbucks at our at the Target that we go to. So we'll get, we'll get a couple of Starbucks beverages... We'll start walking around the store. I mean, I'm fucking done with my Starbucks before the first Immediately. turn. Immediately. Like, it's, yeah. done, it's gone. And, like, and so, yes, absolutely. When I drink hard alcohol, if Ooh. it's there, if it's a mixed drink where, like, it's easy to drink, too, holy shit, I will put that back. And I'll be like, and my wife will be like, you just had four shots in mm-hmm. 10 minutes. And I'm like, Jesus has a, Christ. Has a, um, he doesn't drink hard alcohol very, very rarely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this beer is good, by the way. Thank you. It's very different, too, than the yes. other. Yes. And it's the That's same. That's a totally different taste. Right. It's crazy. Just based on the hops. I, like, I don't even know how to describe this one. It's almost like, um, it's almost got a savory kick. Like, almost almost peppery. Or am I just totally making no, that up? No, you're right. You're, yeah. are, do you get It's that just at so all? much more smooth. To me, it's way more drinkable. Well, you know what? It is, it, I would say the first one's more smooth to me, but it, I'm so used to drinking IPAs, like standard IPAs, yeah. that this feel, it's not that it's not smooth, but it's different, and it's got that almost like peppery, savory flavor that like I could, I could probably pace myself a little more on this. And see, I'm the opposite. I could pound this. Well, I would, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Shame on. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm much more, this is my jam. And in fact, when they do That's beer good, shots though. at station, they know that Juicy is not our first choice. Beer shots. Yeah. I, we talked about this. You, yeah. you never did the Century Club. No. I, so to me, the, like the whole like Power Hour or the Century Club or the like Case Day. I was never a case. Wait, wait, what's Case Day? What? I'm sorry. I don't know sorry. what Case Day is. Case That's Day? That's a Minnesota thing. Is it? I don't know. I've never. I've lived in Arizona, Nevada, and California. I've never heard of case day. Case day is when you get a case of beer and you drink it. Oh, that's just a normal Saturday. No, but it's it's <laughs> a it's kid. an event. I'm kidding. It's folks. like a sa- I don't do that. It's like a Saturday in the fall at colleges. You have case day. It's typically around. I want to say is it my like girls a case be, per person? 
Yeah. Shit. You get a case of beer and you all like sit around campus and you drink your case of beer and you have to finish your entire case. Mm. Every person. Wow. Yeah. So it's 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 a fun day. You know, my dad, uh, he used to do this golf tournament and he's actually he's sober now um, for, I think, like 20 years. Mm. But um, he uh, he used to have this golf tournament in Oregon where you had to partner up and you guys and it was tournament style. Um, but you got an 18 pack between the okay. two of you and you had to finish the 18 Pussies. pack before. <laughs> 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 oh, it's his birthday. You talk Sorry, shit. I'm a clerk. I apologize. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get past this. Um, so you had to drink all 18 beers by the time you finished the 18 holes. Which makes sense. That's a beer right, hole. Right. I'm on board with that. So, I take back the pussy comment. <laughs> so what he said, though, is the best teams, their strategy typically was one guy would drink all 18. Mm. And then the other guy would generally not drink at all. Or maybe like have one or two. Hold the phone. So that they way. Each, hold on. 18 for two people? For two people. Oh. Well, that's nine that's a piece. A, yes. In in a four hour period. But on those tournaments, you know, it's a five hour round. It could be a five hour round, yeah. and it was probably more like Coors Light. Coors Light, for sure. Yeah. To- totally. But you know, mm-hmm. we didn't have this the nine percent beers back then. No, and I would say case day is almost always like a Coors Light or Miller yeah, Light. You're not drinking a case of IPAs. You drink twenty four IPAs. You're probably no, you're dead. dead, or or you're just really bloated. Like Whoa. you're just you feel awful. Yes, or you're puking halfway through. Totally. Yeah, Century Club, People, a lot of people barf. So the funny thing is, like when, so for those of you who don't know, and this is because Ann was talking about uh, 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 beer Beers. shots. So Century Club is 100 shots of beer in 100 minutes, which if you actually calculate it out, I, th- I forget what, I think it was like seven beers total or something like that. Um, and that's, all, that's in almost two hours. That's a lot of beer, but it's not a crazy amount of beer. It's usually, hard because I, I think you're, so... Getting scientific on you, how are you drinking that beer, the the amount of beer that you're drinking every minute, how is it portioned? Yeah, it's like a shot. So that's where you're drinking, you're opening your mouth, and you're getting a lot of air yes. in there as well. You, God, you are too smart for your own damn good. Thanks. You got this. You got. You nailed it. That's the problem. That's the problem. You are burping I, so I hard. I can drink. You feel awful. 100 ounces of beer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's like two pitchers. Yeah, that's not, not bad. No, it's, it's seven in, beers, right. I think. Again, yeah, don't fair. quote me on the calculations here. No, I want, I, I'm tracking to that. 12 because, ounces well, times seven. So, yeah. like that's 84, 90, yeah, whatever. Our math is off. Close. But, yes. It's like eight beers. Regardless, it's four beers an hour. Somewhere around there, four to five. And you can do that. It's just the it's the way that it's you're consuming because it because you're consuming it like a shot. You yes. take in all the air with it, yeah. And so many dudes who I know for a fact mm-hmm. in because this was in college. This is back in the college days. Could put back a twelve pack or a sixteen. Yeah, like, they could do that no problem. But they would Ralph halfway through this. Have you drank in altitude very often? So I, well, I went to school in Flagstaff, seven thousand oh. feet. Yep, you have six thousand feet. I should say. Okay. Yeah, it felt good. I, I came from San Diego, so it was like sea level. Right. And then you know we went to Flagstaff the first few times. It's like whoa. We have that issue a lot when people come to visit us. Number one. Um, it kind of aligns with don't fuck with the Johnsons. They come to town. They're not prepared <laughs> to hang with the Johnsons. The Johnsons hang. Yes. That needs to be on your doorstep. Yeah. And then number two, drinking at altitude. Yeah. Totally. So it's a double it makes whammy. A difference. And then number three, weed is legal. And so they oh, think shit. that they're going to throw. You double down. You're yeah, done. Well, people, people like to come to Denver and like, oh, weed's legal. And they kind of get mad at us. I shouldn't say mad at us. There's people who are disappointed in us that we don't care about the weed being legal because people come to town and they're like, we got to go to the weed store. Like, oh my gosh, so cool. And we're like, it is. I get it. It's legal. It's awesome. That's that's wonderful. I have no issue with weed. But then people will kind of blow their wad on drinking a whole bunch. Yes. Wanting to ingest or smoke some weed because mm-hmm. they can. Yep. And next thing you know, we, the first, we've lived there for two years and the first like six months, I think we had probably 
five groups of people come to visit us. Nice. And out of that, I would say four of them at least had a puker in the group. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah. People don't, like, first of all, you get older and shit doesn't Uh digest as quick. I mean, Mm -hmm. and so when you have pot and you have alcohol... Mm -hmm. It just does not combine well, unless and, unless you're a high school or a college kid. Yeah. Like, the, I think it ends after, as soon as you graduate college, you're done. You can't do it anymore. You pick one for the day. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could smoke pot and have like a beer to relax. Or you can drink six beers and have like a tiny bit of pot. Yeah. But multitudes. But not of, an edible. Oh, nope. So here's the thing too. And, and actually I learned this from Joe Rogan. So I listen to that podcast, like I think 50 million other people in the world. So mm-hmm. it's not like I'm special here. Relax, zombie. By the way, my chihuahua's in this podcast booth. Um, so when you take an edible, oh, apparently I have a meeting in 15 minutes. I can't wait. It's not true. Uh, uh, so when you take an edible, that THC is actually digested differently than when you smoke pot and it actually is digested there's like certain enzymes in that thc in edibles that go through your liver so guess what your liver is also processing all the shit that you're drinking so if you're having edibles and you're drinking that's gonna fuck you up in a different way something very new well and again i'm not a fucking scientist so like this is i believe you but but it makes sense when you say it like say with authority and i believe you i i I did and i felt good about it yeah but i'm also gonna take it back a little bit just because i'm like "Eh, no but it makes sense well also so the fact that an edible takes an hour and a half to kick in, where if you smoke something, it's like instantaneous. Oh, so you could have had like six beers and then mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I feel good. I'm going to take this edible. And then it's you wait another 15 in. minutes and you're like, oh, fuck this. This isn't even working. Yeah. I'm going to have like six more beers. And then yep. you're just like, oh, fuck. Um, so I told Amanda a story before we came out here that I don't, I think you were not listening to just because you were with Jackson or whatever. Mm. But um, I have a good we have a lot of weed friends in Denver. And it's, a, it's a weed town? Yeah. And um, one of my really good friends is a general manager of a dispensary. Nice. And she is a professional. Mm. And she has back issues, so she has a <laughs> medical card. Why does she even need a medical card? Because then you can get the strong stuff. So oh, sure. typical, typically it's an like edible is deal. 10 milligrams is a is a serving, if you will. Mm. And she has access to like cookies that are like 200 milligrams. And so for the Game of Thrones finale. Oh boy. Check yourself. Oh, did you even remember it? No, she, I didn't. You didn't do it. No, no, no. You didn't partake. No, Mm. she had 400 milligrams for the. Jesus. How is she doing? Amazing. Does she remember it? That girl can crush. She's the general manager of a weed business. Yeah, she can I mean, crush. That's... And actually, um, some of our friends, too, who are in the weed business talk about taking a tolerance break because the way the THC absorbs into your fat cells, sometimes it's like it gets to be to a point where you need more and more and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so they take a tolerance break so that their fat cells how can... Long, how long do they have to take? Um, most that I heard are a couple weeks, maybe a month the most. Mm. And then they kind of flush it. But professional level, I would say it probably takes a good, you know, 45 days to kind of flush it out of your system. Is that like, is that like basically getting like virgin lungs again? Yeah, I think so. No shit. Because yeah. I've often wondered about like alcohol. Right. So, but alcohol doesn't stay in your system once it doesn't. It, it's seventy-two hours. You're good to come. But your I have liver, a significantly. Your liver might disagree. <laughs> I have a way better tolerance now than I did when I was in high school. But I don't know what builds up the tolerance to alcohol. Do you? Well, I, I've, well, here's what I'd like to think. Again, no scientific backing. Mm. Is that eventually your liver becomes more efficient at processing the alcohol? You don't Dude, think that's so? the most fucked up thing I've ever heard. You don't think that's right? No. Why wouldn't it become more efficient? Your body becomes more efficient at everything that it does often. If you lift heavy things more often, your muscles get bigger so that you're, you're more efficient me you to lift. You think my liver is in really great shape? No, no, no. I'm not saying it's in great shape. What I mean is it's <laughs> learned how to process alcohol more quickly. I'm saying your liver's um, chugging along like a fucking train that's like, Ugh, I, I, I can keep doing this. I'm doing better, but I'm not feeling so great. Huh. I've never thought about it. Like a it. struggling train. Like like the, what's the children's story? Tommy, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. No. 
No, the I believe I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Isn't that Thomas? No, that's not Thomas. <laughs> Thomas is a blue fucking dipshit train that doesn't hold a candle to the I think I can. Who's the I think I can? Does he have a know. name? It's not Thomas. The little train that could. Yeah, that's the little that's, train that could. And yeah, Thomas. I think I can, I think I can. It's a little <laughs> Goddamn Thomas. <laughs> Thomas is a bitch. He is. He Thomas probably, doesn't know shit. He probably only drinks 18 <laughs> beers on case day. <laughs> what a dumbass. <laughs> like that guy. Oh, That Thomas. guy, yeah. Also, if your name is Thomas, I'm sorry, but you're maybe kind of a douchebag. He probably drinks White Claws. Hey, don't. <laughs> hey, Claws are in fashion. <laughs> hey, there's no laws when you're drinking Claws. <laughs> I agree. I will just say I hated them. And now I am a fan? believer. Oh, shit. I know. You did it. But you, I'm also you're I'm the, diabetic. And so, and I've had this probably discuss- lower sugars. Way lower sugar. And people will say like, oh, they're so sweet. They're no, not they, sweet. They no. use They use actual real sugar, but in the process of brewing it, because it is a, it's a process. It's mm. it's different. Remember the um, Zima, if you will? Yeah, or I fucking remember Zima. Malt beverage. It's not a malt. Smearing off ice. Yeah, it's not a malt beverage. It's an actual brewing process. And a lot of breweries are starting to make the, ooh, seltzer. Get her. And, um. They, it's a process that goes and it kind of like burns the sugar in it. So not burns, brews something. Burns so, it off. Whatever. So that the sugar it's content goes down, it still adds some sweet flavor to it without adding the carbohydrates and keeping the sugar. So I can drink 20 to 24 claws and it's the same amount of carbohydrates as one small piece of cake. Get the fuck out of here. Serious. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Jesus. The one thing is, is that, so my insulin pump, I have to dial in what I'm eating and what I'm drinking. Mm-hmm. And so for like beers, the IPAs, things like that do have a higher carbohydrate content. The claws, they do, don't they? Yeah. yeah, the claws trick my body a little bit into thinking that there's carbs in it. And so my blood sugar will kind of go up, but it's a mm. false high. So I have to be a little bit more careful on how I correct. Okay. Because I've gotten low from drinking too many claws because mm. my body thinks that I'm taking in. So there still are some laws when you're drinking claws. There are. There are the diabetic laws. <laughs> there's the diabetic laws <laughs> for the claws. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that video though? That ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. I haven't. Se- I don't think I've seen the original original video. I just know the tagline, and I know that it's like hashtag and. It's fucking incredible. I'll show you. I will look I'll it sh- up. No, yeah. I'll, sh- I'll show you after we get off this podcast. It's. It made me actually drink white claws for a couple of weeks, and actually I talk shit. I I would I I don't mind white claws, especially in the summertime when it's hot outside. Yeah. It's. So I would say there's a couple things. Station makes. A seltzer that I really like. Um, it's called Treat Your Seltz. Mm. Um, called Arms is Who's another- their marketing person? Who's coming up with these names? Um, Where's would- the brewer? So the brewer and um, Justin and Dustin and... There's a couple different guys. Um, I don't know who all comes up with the names. I'll have to find out exactly who's coming. Because some of the names suck. <laughs> and it's like tangerine cream. Really? I but, hope you tell them to listen to this podcast. I will. And they like this part. Yes. You guys um, good with that? She just called you out. I want there to be a little bit more original. Treat yourselves is brilliant. I love it. <laughs> it is. That's a good one. Tangerine cream. It just basically describes what you're drinking. Don't tell me what I'm drinking. Give me a little. But you you got to keep with the theme. If you're going to have a clever name, yes. for they one, all have to have a clever you got to have all clever Juicy names. Juicy Banger, clever. It's awesome. It's cute. It's filthy. It's filthy. I love it. <laughs> but then there's like... It's not like uncanny, though. No. <laughs> fair enough. But then there's also like American Copper. Okay. Well. So they like they so they so they got real clever with some, and then some they were just like, you know what? Fuck it. We're too tired. Yeah. That's it. Just just launch it. Yes. Whatever. Yes. So that's my own. I love Station. I <laughs> love all of their beers. Their naming conventions are sometimes brilliant and other times very lazy. Like, give it an extra day, guys. If, if yeah. the creativity is not striking, <laughs> yes. like, you just um, hold out for a little bit. Called Arms in Denver also has a seltzer that they call... Uh, La Claw Suit. 
Oh, shit. So They're it's calling like, it out. They're, like, prepared for it. Well, it's like LaCroix and Claw mm-hmm. and, yeah, it's very clever. I love it. I yeah. love it. They have some really good ones. They also have, like, um, something about Putin and uh, riding horseback naked on a Putin I think horse. that actually made national news on a couple yes. of sites. Yes, Because I think I saw that beer. Yeah. They should have charged just, like, $100 for that beer. It's fun. It's a fun brewery. Um, there's a lot of fun ones in Denver. Yeah. Well, Denver, Denver's probably what, like the third best beer scene in America. That's probably fair. It's like, it's like Portland and San Diego, I think go back and forth Yeah. between like the best, like the most good breweries, Mm -hmm. like craft breweries, you know. I'm going to also give a shout out to Minnesota. Uh, You know, I think everyone's coming out with, that's like the best part about this whole beer revolution is you can't go anywhere now without having a good brewery in it. If your town doesn't have a good brewery, then you don't deserve to be on the map. That's fair. I would say in Minnesota, Google Maps, what they, what Minnesota brings to the table is that it's a very beer drinking demographic. Mm. So it's not super hipster. It's not um, cutting edge. But it's like it's it comes from the deep roots of like we drink We're beer. Fucking drink beer. Yes. We're not drinking beer to have a curly mustache and no. to have a pinky up in a little goblet glass. I'm fucking drinking a, p- a yeah. pint. Yes. Get out of my fucking way. So I will tell a really quick Minnesota story that kind of level sets what the level of drinking and beer drinking and just like um, shenanigans happen in Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh. I get the accent when I say it, but I love it. No, it's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, so back in the day when I was eh, 22, 23, I was working at a bank, hmm. First National Bank of Pine City. So you didn't always work for a chocolate no, company? No. And we had um, what was called Secretary's Day. Oh, that not still in, exists. No, yeah, but they call it Administrative think, Assistant yeah, Day administrative now. Administrative yeah. It was called Legit Secretary's Day. Sure. And the only people who worked in the office were women, other than the officers of the bank. There were four men officers, and every teller, every loan secretary, every you know what, we were all women. And so, like, the second week in April was a real big day. Okay. Because it's Secretary's Day. It's game time. It was amazing. Yeah. And I got to get in with the Cool Kid Club on Mm -hmm. the good group, because each of the four officers... Brought a group out. Okay. For lunch. Oh, and I'm using, big time. Yes. And so I got to go with Dick Kuzel, who was <laughs> the beast. And like, it, yes. Is he a good guy? The best. <laughs> okay. The best guy. Because I really want to make fun of his name. No, you can. Because yeah. he doesn't give a fuck. That's a fantastic he's the guy who, name. He's the guy who mowed his yard on a riding lawnmower and paid the neighbor kid to come running out and bring him a beer whenever he raised his hand. <laughs> like the kid next door. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, my God. He would mow his own yard, but he paid the kid to bring him beer as he was mowing yard. And my friend... Just threw the flag up? Yeah. Like my friend this- Alana, who was his daughter, I went to high school kind of with her, um, she would leave out beer and cookies for Santa instead of milk and cookies <laughs> and it was always Blatt's light but, but that sounds awful it is awful yeah and so Secretary's Day I got to go with in the cool kid club sure uh, with Dick Kuzel Dick Kuzel which sounds like a male banana hammock who had a case of Blatt's light in his trunk on our way to lunch okay we had roadies you had roadies with your boss your yeah. bank boss yeah which presumably, I mean, these are very serious people. Yeah. Well, eh. we also had a fridge in the basement of the bank that had beer and wine and wine coolers in it at all like times. That was a different time. And it was the you 90s. You can't have that in a fucking the bank 90s. these days. It was the 90s. You can't have that in a fucking, and unless so, you're a tech startup. So we, we road trip to Wisconsin from a little town. Pine City was where we lived at the time, Minnesota, which is about 20 miles to the Wisconsin border. And we literally had road roadies in the car with us, as with our boss, as we drove to Wisconsin. Then we got to Wisconsin and had drinks at lunch mm. before we. And he was like, "We'll take another round before we order our lunch." <laughs> <laughs> and he took care of you guys. Oh yeah. Then we road tripped it on back to Rock Creek, Minnesota. I'm assuming everyone was drinking. Oh yeah. Like yes. this is. Uh, and Before DUIs were a big deal, or what? Uh, uh, they just 
uh, overlooked certain things. <laughs> if it was a white man wearing a tie, yeah, he was fine. Yes. <laughs> and we went to like the Cricket in Rock Creek, Minnesota, which is a little awesome bar that I love so much that to the this is the bar where I went so many times before I turned 21 that when I turned 21 I was like I, I need to take a break because <laughs> I don't realize that I just finally turned 21 like hey hang on a second but we I know you yeah for Secretary's <laughs> Day it was about an 8 hour lunch jeez we left around 1130 in the morning and we got so you just never went back no no was anyone working at the bank well, that's why we went in four shifts. We had four oh, officers. Oh, I, I got you. So we each took gotcha. our turn. We okay. had like a whole week of Secretary's Day. Mm. It was wow, they amazing. took it seriously. It was amazing. They took, it ser- they took the beer seriously, too. Yes. Uh-huh. And at one point, um, one of the women I worked with, she was she was a little older. She was drinking straight cream de menthe. What the? F- wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the green stuff? <laughs> the fucking green stuff. It's and just like... That's like liquor and sugar. Yeah, but our boss realized that her teeth were so green that he told the bartender to switch over to the clear cream de menthe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut it off. <laughs> yeah. Don't just, bring any water. Just you know. switch over to the clear. Maybe you just switch some water for a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know. Just switch yeah. it around. Yes. So I But def- they didn't drink water back then either. No. Like that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't, that wasn't an option. That wasn't a real thing. <laughs> no. No. You drink you drink beer for your water. Mm-hmm. If you were drinking, you were actually having hard alcohol. Yes. Like beer was just like, yeah, you know, breakfast. Blatt's light. You gotta have some Blatt's. Yeah, yeah. Blatt sounds like the noise that you're gonna make when you barf. Oh, yeah. Like, like Blatt, it literally sounds like, oh, I have too many Blatt's, I'm gonna have Blatt. <laughs> Like, it's just, yeah, that's fair. It just was one of those like off. It's cheap, sure. Shitty beer. Pfeiffer Kings, uh, Kingsbury was another one. What the fuck is this all Canadian beer? No. Do you know? Actually, I actually have a question. Do you know what um, Windsor is? Like the city? No, like there's alcohol. A, there's a Caesars in Windsor. No, Windsor, like a Windsor Coke or a Windsor. It's a no whiskey. It's very popular. It's Canadian Windsor. I know Canadian Club. Nope, this is Windsor. Okay. Minnesota nope. is Windsor. Is that territory. still around? Yeah. Mm. People pound it back in Minnesota. <laughs> it sounds like people in Minnesota pound everything. Yeah. It's just, you know, but, okay, let me just say this, because this surprised me, and mm-hmm. I don't know where Minnesota fell on the list, but I saw a list of a ranking of the 50 states and how many drinks they take to get drunk. Mm. So I thought this was incredible. What a, what a great Minnesota study. Minnesota has to be really high up there. Okay, so we can refer back because I actually posted it on the Instagram of this page. Like and follow Beer Freaks. <laughs> no, but I, but I did. I posted Hashtag it on the... Hashtag 20% off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they can pay for anything. Actually, you can't follow me on Patreon, but I don't have any patrons yet. Um, but you... So if you go there to that link, you can see there is a list of all 50 states ranked based on the number of drinks that it takes... It's self-reported, right? So so that's... The survey's already got some fucking issues. But it's, how many drinks does it take you to get drunk? And I would have thought, like, fucking South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Like, all the northern states, because what else are you fucking doing up there? Wisconsin feels like it should be number one. Yeah, yeah. What was? It was not those. In fact... I think the Dakotas were on the bottom. They so, were like an average of like three drinks to get drunk. Okay. Self-reported. Self-reported doesn't help. Does not help. But also... Like maybe it's like a small town where like, I don't want Johnny down the road to know that it takes me like 17 drinks to get drunk. Yeah. Or is it that they're like... I mean, I probably... I went and I had two, but they really had 10. Uh, it could be. It could be self-delusion. It could be, you know, hmm. trying to save face. But so it was shocked number one. me. Uh, number one was... Number two was Michigan. Number one was fucking Arizona. But I think that state is skewed by colleges. Yeah, ASU really... And U of A. U of A, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Is that where you went, U of A? Uh, actually, NAU. Which don't you don't even know what, even what that saying. means. You don't know what that means. Uh, national. I mostly just claim my master's national degree, which was Arizona University. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly just claim my master's degree because that's the one that people know is USC. 
Um, you should. Yeah, it's a lot easier. But yeah. every time I say any, and you just northern, threw, you literally just drop that. Like my master's yeah. degree. By the way, mm, um, I'm a big I'm smarter deal. than everybody <laughs> here. I'm a Trojan. Mm-hmm. Suck my balls. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> All right. Well, see, and this is why we didn't do the video podcast. Um, no, I went to Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, Arizona. Is it? And it was a great fucking class four of years. like 600 people? No, actually, it was like uh, it was like a thousand. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was. It was a small. Is a small school. Hey, you had fun. I had a fucking blast because Flagstaff. If have you been to Flagstaff before? You should go. So I'm pretty well traveled, but not in the U.S. Oh shit! Now who's fucking showing off? No. Look at that. No, this is this literally is like like the master's degree statement all uh, over again damn it i'm yeah. a douche no i li- I only go to europe when no. i travel i'm sorry south so, of france hold on there's a reason behind this <laughs> a little bit um when i was a kid my dad had like a secret life oh you, yeah. you've told me a little yeah about this. and so because of his secret life he took my mom on very extravagant vacations so we went to cool places when i was a kid and that's what I grew up thinking was the norm. Also at General Mills, the norm was people would be like, fun facts about me. I've been to 71 countries. And so I had this like weird kind of kind of uh, measurement on what travel. I, I, I went to school to be a travel agent also, by the way. Like that was my first career was I was a travel agent. Yeah. Um, So when I look at trips or I look at like traveling to places, Mm -hmm. we never took a road trip. We never like went camping in the, what do you call them? The South Dakota. What's that? Catskills? No, South Dakota. I don't know. The, we never went to like Mount Rushmore or like Yellowstone National Mm. Park. We went to Mexico or we went to Hawaii is in the United States. I get that. But like we went to like kind of a little bit more exotic places to appease my mom because she had a love for travel. Um, okay. And so when I became an adult, then I was like, oh, no. What? You want to go to Mexico? I'm like, no, we're going to go to the Philippines. Oh, so you one-upped. You were one-upping. I just upping. wanted to go to the like most... next level. I want to go to, going. like, the most obscure places yeah. that you could think of. Sure. So when I look at flights and travel, I have, like, flight alerts right now set up for Buenos Aires mm. or for Santiago, oh. Chile. Like, I... That's just how how I think. Is, you go see Machu Picchu, like that would be kick ass. Yeah, I'm more so. I want to go to Argentina for the cheap red meat and wine. Oh yeah, well they do meat well Fuck down there. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. And Patagonia, Chile, the mountains. I mean, just Chile. Go I'm to say it right though, Chile. That what's the Iguaza Falls I have in no Uruguay? Idea. That's the extent of my knowledge of Chile. 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 Um, so I... My computer overheating right now. I went I went to Arizona recently for work, and that's the first time I've ever been to Arizona. That's the first time you've been to Arizona? Yeah. Well, I mean, you've been to Vegas so many times. Like, it's the same. It's basically the exact same thing. Yeah. It's just a different shade of yellow. That's, that's real fucking hot. <laughs> that's, actually, Phoenix is even fucking hotter than Vegas. Yeah. That's why, like, when you mentioned Phoenix... Or Arizona yeah, but earlier. I would, move, I would move there, whatever. You'd move there? Don't fucking move there. No, it's worse. It's but worse. But here's the thing. People say, like, oh, Minnesota's worse. Guess what? You don't have to go outside in January. There's tunnels. There's way. Yeah, but, but winter's different. Like, there's become a culture around winter time where it's like, ooh, let's all get all cuddled up or on the couch and drink hot cocoa and watch movies. That's nice. Because like people it. have created this culture of, like, that being cool. But you know what fucking sucks? Being is, hot. Is, yeah, you're damn right. Because when when you when when you're getting into summer when it's like late spring and you see all these commercials on TV that are like summer's almost here and you see people running around on the beach having fun outside enjoying themselves and you're in Las Vegas and you're like summer's almost here fucking time for air conditioning time for my $400 energy bill time for me to never leave I got the house real pissed a couple weeks ago when i was here and 
I was hearing everyone say, oh, what a beautiful fall day. It's so gorgeous. Oh, it was 97 <laughs> fucking degrees. <laughs> that is a nice, lukewarm day in Las Vegas. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah no shit. But we've all become accustomed to it because we're desert idiots. Someone fucking decided to create a city here, and we all were dumb enough to say, yeah, sure, we'll come. That's why I want to move to, like, Seattle. Yeah, Seattle I'm I'm in favor of. Except, like, I'm pretty sure half the city is owned by Amazon now. Fair. I know. So you'll have Alexa listening to you 100% of the time. I just want to move somewhere that it's, like, temperate and a little chilly. Like Portland. Portland would be great as well. Seattle has a Delta hub. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're not far. Well, it's far enough to make it. Portland is not enough commerce. Portland is a little too hipster. Yeah, it's very hipster. Se- My wife likes to make fun of Portland because she says she can't tell the difference between the hipsters and the bums. Yeah. You is literally that, can't. Is that flannel that you're wearing like a vintage... <laughs> You know, like super expensive Patagonia, or is right, it right. an actual like something you or just is it got Patagonia in Patagonia from the '90s that you found in the dumpster? Yeah. Not to make fun of fucking people who are homeless. Just um, look, look at the PC world that we're living in. I know. So there's times where I'm like, do you watch old TV shows ever? Seinfeld, 100 percent of and my days. Do you ever I look watch. at it and go like, whoa? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. You want to talk about on woke? Yeah. Well, Garrett. but that's, I think that's why our culture needs to figure out a way where, like, we can say, like, yeah, all right. It's like, it's like, that's grandpa. That's yeah, grandpa. Yes. Like, you, we got to have a path to be able to say, like, shit, the culture is changing faster now than it was before. So now it's not grandpa. It's actually dad. Yeah. Like, dad still says this shit. So there's like, also. What, what kind of shit am I saying right now that's racist or, or. On PC. I don't... I can't think of an example because I don't think of you as offensive or on PC. But, but there's, there's a sure very good chance saying, in yeah. 10 years, there's something that I'm saying right, right now. That's, that's fair. Um, I would say I was listening to the radio this morning and they were... They were saying something where it was... Oh, I know what it was. It was um, a guy and a girl got engaged And the girl said to the guy, okay, now that we're engaged, you need to unfollow all of your exes, block them all, get rid of their numbers, do everything. And the advice was, you know, this guy should not be like, and the one of the radio DJs said, it was a direct, a direct quote was, I feel like he is going to be carrying her purse around. At all times. What they meant was that she was in control. Yeah. But to me, it was like an offensive sure. term. It's meant of, to be. Of like, nobody's going to carry my fucking purse around. And it's offensive to even say that, like, I have this purse that somebody needs to carry. Or, like, his balls are in my purse. Right. Or, Which was the intention. The masculinity yeah. thing is gone. Da, da, yes. Da, da, da. Yeah. And it's like, no, no. How about, like... She is wrong. I definitely don't agree yeah, with what she's saying. You shouldn't do that. That's weird. That is weird. It's and that's her own insecurities. That's definitely. And that should be addressed more as, hey, she has some insecurity issues that you might want to talk about. Mm. Or like, have you done something to be untrustworthy? But more so, it's like, is there an insecurity issue? How do you talk about it? But it was all about like, oh, you can't put your balls in her purse and let you. I'm they like, didn't even address the root of the issue. They're just like, no. you're a bitch. Yes. Yeah, you're her bitch now. Because yeah. that's the bigger story. Yes. That's the easier story to talk about. And I didn't mean to get all political about it in my head, but I was like, how? But it was also a country radio station. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit more of that clientele listening. Sure. Who wants to hear that? Well, and, and that's... So here's the thing about PC that, that, that I truly believe at this point, which is like... You can, you can fight back against language. You can try to restrict language. Mm-hmm. But really what matters the most is Intent, the context that, yes. it's, that it's put in. Yes. So, like, I could stop saying derogatory terms. I, I don't actually say derogatory terms. But, but like, it's not going to change. But if I, was, if I was a hateful person, then I could stop saying derogatory terms. And I could create a new term that me and my derogatory buddies right. would then use. And it's like, okay, so... so so the, the term doesn't matter. It's no. the it's the context and the meaning behind. I agree. Um, 
So like, I just, and I just want to throw this in real quick because this is something that I'm really passionate about, which is like the fucking Berkeley, California laws that got passed. Did you hear about that? I don't know. Maybe. Where it was like, so I think the, the, the um, Berkeley City Council passed some laws that said that like within their city or state um, uh, employees and, and, and their documentation, they could no longer use certain terms. And I think there were like 70 that were identified. And they all had the word man in them in one way or another. So let me give you a couple of examples yeah. because I think that this is really interesting. So um, I only remember two distinctly, but there are two that I think make a lot of sense. Uh, the first one was manpower. Which I look at that term and I think, really? That's not that big of a deal. I could kind of understand, like, well, what about woman power? Like, but, okay, I think we all fucking understand what the term manpower means. Yes. Like, let's get some manpower behind this. Like, I, it's, it's excessive. It's a little weird. Yes. But I think that was one of the better ones. Okay. Now, let me tell you the worst one. The worst one was manhole. Do you know what a manhole is? Yeah. It's a fucking sewer cover. Yeah. So I don't want to be a she cover or a woman cover. <laughs> no, it's disgusting. You can have that one. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yes. Yes. I would. I don't Take even it. want to keep this you get, one. No, you keep it. <laughs> Apparently, no, 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 no. It's now a sewer cover. Um, Which I get the vernacular has been derived from a shortened version of human to and. Or it's also based on men. I get the I get the origin of it and the fact mm. that it's not an inclusive term. Sure. Here's here's an example for you um, that I think is a positive example of being overly sensitive sure. or changing in the vernacular. Is instead of calling someone a prostitute, calling them a sex worker. Okay. Are you familiar with this? I have heard the term sex worker significantly more often, but I didn't yes. really pay attention. So it's a complete culture shift where people are no longer saying they were a prostitute or they were something that's a little bit more derogatory. And they're trying to change it into be a little bit. Do you know who Jonathan Van Ness is? No. I don't think I do. Queer Eye. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know which one he, it is. He, Was that derogatory? No. Okay. Because I said like which one? No, like, uh, he well because he's the he's more of a non-binary and he has long hair and dresses. The blonde one? No, he has uh, no. long dark hair and dresses and a lot of dresses and okay. he wears a lot of female oriented clothing. But okay. he is a biologically a man, but kind of goes a little bit more non-binary. But he prefers he pronouns. Okay. Um, which is a cultural shift as well. Sure. Just talking about what's your what is your preferred pronoun yeah it's a huge that's a huge thing for all of us to kind of process and and become more aware of and and recently my sister and uh, my younger daughter Valerie we had to talk about they or them and mm. how that's a that's a big shift in your talking when you see that person and you look at that person and you go that's a boy and you say he but in reality, they prefer a she pronoun mm. or that's a she and they prefer they. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had a hard time with the they, them. Mm. I think we all do. It's a, it's just right. a shift. Right. But when my sister and Valerie gave me the explanation of let's just say that you you forgot your phone somewhere. Yeah. You forgot your phone and I don't know whose phone it is. So the, there's a phone sitting on the table. And what do you say to me? Someone forgot their phone. Sure. And you say, oh, they might come back and get it. Yeah. You don't you say, don't know. yeah, you don't say he will probably be back or she will be back. You'll say they. Right. And so that's where I think that the manhole and the manpower are trying to get us to that place. It just feels really awkward as we're getting there. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. It feels clunky. It feels, it feels really clunky. clunky. And it feels unnecessary. It Well, so he, I guess, fair enough. But I guess the counterpoint would be, you know, we're, we're moving into a world that feels less personal every day. Mm-hmm. 
we have more technology, we're moving into social bubbles, we're moving into echo chambers, we're moving into a lot of different things where we see fewer and fewer outside opinions. So the idea that I can't look at someone who I can, and again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, I'm just saying like, I can look at someone and I say, that's clearly a man or that's clearly a woman, and I'm just having a conversation with you. I'm trying to start a conversation, let's say. Like, hey buddy, or whatever. Yeah. Yo, bitch. Yo, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was trying to think of a I female. <laughs> I was like, hey, lady. Like, that's also kind of awkward. But, yeah. okay, so maybe a, a woman would say something to a, a female and a... <laughs> hey, sister. Or right. a girlfriend. What's up? So I guess yeah. what my point is, is that, like, if... And I can't say this because, again, I, as a, I, I am a white male who is privileged and yeah. i know that and i'm yeah. actually not even making fun of that because no. that's true yeah, i yeah. know that for a fact but like i guess if if i was someone who was stretching the boundaries of what we know as a society culturally like he she we know yeah. this this is something that we've had for thousands of years if i was like you know what i don't really want to subscribe to one of those things if someone said to me like hey buddy and i was like well i actually identify as a female like i wouldn't be pissed Right. I would like I'd be like, hey, uh, you know, thanks for talking to me and having this conversation. Just by the way, I I actually identify as a female. And then that person can have a chance to respond and say, like, well, fuck you, because I think you're fucking crazy. Or they could say, oh, right on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Most people react in the latter of like, I did not mean to offend you. And it's a so um, my older daughter works with a. A non-binary um, co-worker and their appearance looks more feminine mm. but they prefer to go by them but it's mm. really easy to slip into the she right and so Elena has caught herself a lot of times like I am trying really hard mm. and they really have responded to like I just appreciate you trying. Yeah. I know it's an adjustment. I know yeah. it's a it's a shift in your thinking and we'll get there. Right. It's still so new. I, I think as long as we're all in this together. Yes. That's the thing. Oh it's my like, gosh. You just made like a high school musical reference. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so Go sad that you cats. know that. Oh my god. <laughs> um really I quick, watched we that cracked, movie once. <laughs> we cracked another beer and I have to give a shout out to yes. this. Yeah. Here so, we go. This is my we did. F- favorite like kick back to Minnesota. Uh, let me just be clear. These are the guys. Are these, was this your favorite brewery in Minnesota? Y- yes and no. No from a stance of like, there's a lot of little breweries that I like more. Um, and there's a lot of beers I like more. But if I think of like how I can get a Minnesota beer outside of Minnesota that mm. brings me back home, it is Surly Extra Citra. And it is Extra so citra. good. Let's see this. It's like a, it's a very citrus forward hoppy pale ale. It is. Well, cheers. Cheers. Very yeah. drinkable. It's not. It's not that super hoppy. Like mm. I know you like, but it's not. Well, so I, I do, but I mm-hmm. also like. You can't have like four of those Mm-mm. in a row. It'll no. It'll just it, hammer you. Yeah. It'll hammer you. Yes. So this is this is uh, an interesting. So Surly Brewing Co. Uh, four point five percent, which is you know not bad. Like, to throw one of those bad. It's like it's like having the water. It's very drinkable. It's we're, very drinkable. We're washing hot down our yeah. our heavy seven point four. We're washing down our creme de menthe. Washing oh, our teeth yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love- kid. Four point five is not bad though. It's no, just it's great. We've all been spoiled by like the seven percenters. Where you like you have a couple of those and you're like, ooh. Uh, ooh. I really like the lighter. Do you like uh, like uh, what do they call them? Session ales. Session. Eh. Because, like, those are meant to be, like, daytime. Like, you just pound those back. Yeah. I would say I like beer. Yeah. But Me too. Our refrigerator at home. Welcome to my podcast. Our refrigerator at home is 90% Coors Light. Like, that's, is that Kenny's? Is that yours? I'll drink that. I'll drink Coors Light all day. You know, actually, I don't mind Coors Light. No. I don't mind Coors Light. I call it the Switzerland of beers. (laughs) <laughs> so the reason why I say that is, you don't know about this beer, I don't think, but have you ever heard of Michelob Golden Draft Light? Uh, absolutely not, and I hope I never do. 
So Golden Draft Light is a beer that you can only buy in like Minnesota, part of Wisconsin, part of Iowa. You know Oren's a big milk ultra guy. That's that's different. That's Mick Ultra. This is Michelob Golden Draft Light. And they're crinkly. A lot of yep, it's, auto words. It's crinkly. The bottles are crinkly. The cans are crinkly. Mm. Um, it's a specific beer that they only distribute in this like regional area of Minnesota. And I think that like the market share is like 70% or something of light beers is Michelob Golden Draft Light. Mm. And then there's in this one section. Yep. Yeah, and then there's Miller Light and okay. Bud Light. Mm. So of a light beer drinkers, we have Miller Light, Bud Light, Michelob Golden Draft Light. Okay. And if you drink Miller Light, you do not drink either of the other two. If you drink Golden Draft Light, you do not drink it. Yeah. It's so, like it's like being a Ford or a Chevy guy. Correct. Except for you can be any one of those three Ooh. drinkers and you drink Coors Light. Oh, that's like the wild it's card. It's the Switzerland of beer. It's the Joker. Yes. If you you could be a Bud Light Why? drinker. Why? I don't know. Why is But that? it's the only one that everyone will agree on and drink. And if you have a party and you have a like, bunch of coolers at your house, whatever, you label them. If you don't have, say, say you only pick two light wow. beers. Jesus. The Coors Light is the one that everybody can agree upon. Really? Mm-hmm. It's the common denominator. Yeah, we used, to have, a keg, we used to have a kegerator at our house. Oh, I want a kegerator. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I know, but fuck, like, I don't know. It's a lot of work. Actually, you know what? It wouldn't make sense for this anyway, because no. I want more dip variety. Yes. It, it's a lot of work. But it would be nice to have, like, a base, like, something good that I know I can go to and not, like, like, nice that I don't have a podcast that I do want to drink beer on. Ooh. I'm not going to go out like a chump. My yeah. whole point of starting this podcast was just to get enough fucking free beer that I never had to buy anymore. That's perfect. Right? That's the whole purpose. Uh-huh. I'm just kidding, folks. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I would say in general, the, the the amount of troubles that we had the keg writer as far as like cleaning the lines or getting mm. the CO2 or you run out of a keg and you don't want to have to replace or you don't have a backup keg and yeah. it's not cold and... That kind of stuff. It's like, just go buy some fucking beer. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. I don't know. We have a dedicated beer fridge in our house. We got one of those. That well, sold me on the house. Your refrigerator is bigger than any refrigerator I've ever seen in a house. Yeah, but it's it's a gigantic refrigerator, which, by the way, when we have to fucking replace that thing, I think we're just going to move. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. I do. I, I think it's smart. Uh so whoever's listening, don't buy this house because you're going to get a bad refrigerator. Um, but we do so that we have a little beer fridge. And it was it was funny because like actually it was a, it was a selling point for my wife, too, because she's like, it's I'm tired of fucking seeing beer in the in the fr- in the main yeah. fridge. Like when I look in the fridge, I want to see like food. I don't want to see like a six pack. And I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. So we bought like a wine fridge, beer fridge. Yeah. It's one of those little like, um, like two feet tall. It has a clear door on it. Has lights in Same it. Same thing. Yeah, and it has yeah. like um, shelves in it. And then above it, we bought a shelf. And then above that is a wine rack. So we put it in the entryway of our house in Denver. Oh, you just have like people walk right in and they're like, yeah. "Look at this beast!" Welcome to the Johnsons. <laughs> Fuck the Johnsons hang. <laughs> the Johnsons <Yes. laughs> hang. Yeah, well done. So, uh, we're at almost an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, boy. Which is awesome. And but I think we aggressive. We talked a lot about the beer. Yes. Which is actually the more fun yeah. part. Um, but I think the bird thing is really interesting. I think that I've unpacked a few things with the birds recently with understanding my need for control and understanding the childhood. Did you unpack it on this podcast? Um, I feel I unpacked, like we got a little deeper. Yeah, I unpacked it a little bit before that because I really did think a lot about this before I came. Mm. I wanted to make sure that I was prepared to really uh, understand what I was afraid of and what I wasn't afraid of mm. and and why. Because I think that's a bigger thing with, the, with your podcast specifically when you talk about fears. You can be afraid of anything, but if sure. you don't know why you're afraid of it, then is it really a fear or like what right. are, what are you talking about so that was my that was my process for coming into it is that i understood my fear um but i think but i think the other part of it too 
And this, this obviously, this podcast is evolving because I don't think I've done anything to help any of the fears of my guests. Hmm. It really wasn't the intention either, by the way. I just like to write short horror film or short horror stories. Stories. Yeah. You know, a couple pages, whatever, um, which are also on my website, beerfreaks.com. <laughs> No, actually, that was the wrong URL, too. Um, it's beerfreakspod.com. Ooh. Yeah, it's on there. Noted. Um, all of my short stories that I'm proud of, the ones that I'm not proud of didn't make it, but the ones that I like are on there. Um, and actually, I like... Well, this is one of the reasons why I like talking about this is because I like to see and understand a little bit of the weird things that happen in the minds of other people. Mm-hmm. Cause like, cause like, this is a perfect example. I have no idea why you're afraid of birds. I don't, I don't really get that. Like, you know, when, uh, when my buddy Derek came on and he talked about his fear of the dark, fuck dude, like that shit fucks me up. I, I for, ever since I was young, horror films or anything, will basically give me two months of the inability to walk down dark halls. Huh. And I love horror films. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. That's but it's, it's also, counterintuitive. It's, no, it's not because it's it's stimulating. It's it something that causes adrenaline and adrenaline is a good thing. It is. I mean lots of times fear is is adrenaline driven. And so why do you go on a why do you go on a, like a roller coaster ride? Sure. It's yes. adrenaline. Love it. Yeah. Love it. But the difference is the roller coaster, you get off two minutes later. Yeah. And you're done with it. Yeah. And you feel better. The horror films fuck me up for weeks. If it's a good one. If it's yeah. a good one. I, I would say, so like, so let me actually circle back. There are literally like three horror films that have fucked me up. And one of them was recent. Did we talk about the hereditary one? Did I? I heard you talk about it, but I try to block things out like that. Cause Do you watch no, horror films? No. You don't? No. That, maybe that's why you're not afraid of the dark. I don't want to. When I watch something, I do it for escape. Yeah. And I do it and for. That's an escape. Ugh. It's a different kind, though. I don't want to be scared. But I'm not af- I'm not afraid of horror films. I just don't like that creepy. I also don't think that they scare me that much. Well, I think you've watched the wrong horror films. Yeah. Name a horror film that scared you recently. Okay, so so literally the horror film that fucked me up was Hereditary. And Hereditary surprised me because I didn't I so Isn't I Isn't it just some kids who are like stuck at their like wrong grandparents' house? No. Oh, that's a different one. That's a different one. That was the M Night Shyamalan one. There have been some decent horror films lately. So, like, M. Night Shyamalan, I forget what that one was called. But then, like, uh, um, Jordan Peele, some of his stuff, like Us. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. That was weird. I, I It didn't freak me out for long. But you know what really freaks me out, though, is, like, I think the inhuman human movements. Like, when humans don't move like humans, that freaks me out. That looks weird, and that'll haunt me for a while. Hereditary had a little bit of that. Us, us was not scary. That didn't scare. Uh, which one was? Um, us was yeah yeah. Okay, so just literally you making that noise creeped me out a little bit. <laughs> like it, I, I think no, my my hair's not standing, but it did give me yeah. a little tingle. It's silly. <sighs> I think it's how... Okay, so when you watched us... Yeah. Put me in... The, like, were you at your house? Were you in the movie theater? I watched Had it you... twice. One on the plane and one at my house. Oh, okay. On the, see, this is the shit. This is the problem. <laughs> see, now I'm mad. I'm not mad. But... So, I told my wife about Hereditary. Uh-huh. Because I had watched it alone. She was actually on a business trip. And my son was up in bed. So, I yeah. was in the, in the house... All by myself, which already, like, it didn't help the whole thing. My wife is also way more badass than I am. Mm -hmm. So, like, so I already kind of knew she probably was not going to have the same reaction as me. But I told her to watch it. I was like, one of these nights, just watch it. And I'm pretty sure it's going to freak you out a little bit. And then she, she comes back from her business trip. And she's like, I watched it on the flight back. And I'm like, that, no, come on. You can't watch it on the plane. That's like, it's bright. 
I mean, even if it is dark, if everyone's got their windows closed, you're surrounded by all these fucking people. Like, it's a totally different... I actually different... get more emotional on planes when I'm watching movies than I do no. at home. Yeah. Really? Because the altitude, it makes me cry. I watched Soul Surfer. Was that the one with the girl who watched her arm? I cried the whole time. <laughs> It was a horrible movie, but I still cried. Because I, I think the altitude I, makes me <laughs> more emotional. I don't, know. I don't know if it's the altitude or maybe the two maybe beers the that you had fresh. before. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. So, I, what was the movie with um, with Lady Gaga and uh, Bradley Cooper? Oh, in the shed. <sighs> la la oh, my God. A Star is Born. A Star is Born. I, I shit you not. I think my wife thought I was weird for a little bit because I watched that movie like four times so in a did month. I. I was like, I am obsessed, obsessed with this movie. So good. Because Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga mm. were so good in it. And I cried every fucking yes. time. But most of the time, I was actually up in the air because I, I happened to be traveling a lot during that time. And it's very emotional. It's way more emotional in the air. And also, you can't I don't be on know your, that to be true. Also, you can't be on your phone in the air. So at home, if I'm watching it at home, Sometimes I'm on my phone, or oh. sometimes there's a distraction. Well, yes. I pause it to go to the bathroom. Guess what? I don't pee on planes. You can avoid it? Yeah. Unless well, you take short flights, though. Well, but even on, like, a long flight, I would say that... You I can, peed on the way to Africa. Yeah. I can make it... I only, <laughs> you had to. I know, but I only had to pee, like, twice in, like, the 16 hours. Yeah, but, like, to Denver to Vegas. Yeah, you don't have to no. pee. I mean... You gotta pee in that flight. There's something wrong. Cool. And people Unless do. Unless you knock people back. People do. On your way to work. They get on. <laughs> we don't. And they get on the plane, and five minutes later, they have to go to the bathroom. It's annoying. Like before but, you even take off. Yeah. Like the people who are like, oh, man, sorry, sorry. Like, all right, fine. Yeah, pee before you go. So. I will try to watch Hereditary, but I can't guarantee that I'm gonna be afraid. Well, here's the thing. I'm not saying because because it is an abstract one. Like some people are afraid of vampire movies. Vampire movies don't scare me. I'm so used to the vampire trope; it doesn't scare me. Zombie movies, vampire mm. zombie movies don't scare me. No, it's, I think they're actually more like I like watching zombie it's movies. Funny. They're just fun. Yeah. They're, like, what's your take on zombies? Are they fast? Are they slow? Are right. they dying? Do they have thoughts? Like, what's you know? There, there's a lot of fun different ways that you can take a zombie movie. It's more just fun. Like, what's your interpretation? I think it's ghost movies that fuck me up the most. And actually, are you afraid of ghosts? Yes, totally. But I don't believe they exist. But for some reason, there's so. And, and actually, let's go back because I said that there were three movies that have fucked me up. Yeah. And th- actually, when I think about it, the three movies that fuck me up are all ghost based. Hereditary. Hereditary. Ghost. Which actually isn't ghost Patrick based, Swayze. but it had like a weird fucking. It's like a de- like so demon ghosts. Okay. Like so demons and ghosts are kind of like interchangeable in so the way that they're used in movies. Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. Go. <laughs> Whoopi yes. Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. That it was, that fucking I, scene okay. with the clay that yeah. was terrifying. Yeah. When I think back. <laughs> um, no, your other two are. So it's uh, it's hereditary. It's The Shining. The, oh, the 1970s, yeah. or not the 90s, obviously. But that's not, that's mental illness. That's not ghosts. Uh, well, no, it's actually alcoholism. Um, and uh, I would argue, I still would argue mental illness medicated by alcohol. Yeah, they, they made him crazy. They made him crazy yeah. right off the bat, but I thought, I always interpreted it as craziness driven by alcoholism. Oh, I took it the opposite completely. Do so you that- think alcoholism? Or alcohol fueled an already crazy man. No, I think he was crazy and he was trying to medicate with alcohol. So he's trying to help it. Yeah. Mm. He was trying to control his craziness by numbing it with alcohol. Mm. It could be. I never, I never thought. However, like, and that's, I think that's the right interpretation when you're looking through the eyes of Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Not Jack Nicholas. Papa Bear. That happens way too often. I know. Um, but regardless, whether okay. or not what he was so seeing was shining. true or yeah, not, yeah. there were ghosts that he was seeing, and he had been there. You've always been the caretaker. Yeah. And I've always been That's the butler. That's an amazing movie. It's, so it's a good. great movie. It's so good. What's your third? Because they're not at all alike. Uh, well, you don't know. You haven't seen Hereditary. Well, I can guess. It's not really alike, but there are themes. Okay. 
The third one, and this will actually be surprising because I actually, I think most people don't think of it as that scary of a movie, but it's The Sixth Sense. Oh. That movie, f- so I was 11 years old. Oh. And my parents and I went to the movie theater and we saw it. And, um, I did not sleep that night. Oh. I was so terrified. And that was definitely ghosts. Like, that's Ye- ghosts for sure. That's ghosts. So that's ghosts. Hereditary is like demon ghosts. And then. But he was helping the ghosts. Yeah, but the ghosts weren't nice. But he helped him. This is my Pollyanna. <laughs> this is how I am. I look at they the six, nice ghosts. I look at the six senses like, oh, this poor little boy. He helped everyone. Yeah, you could look at it at that way. But you also had a ghost who was chasing him down the hallway with a knife. But that ghost wanted help, and ghost he helped him. Wanted to hurt him. No, it did not. It did just chase Ew. him with a knife. It did not. It wanted yeah. help. It wanted to go into the. So I have a friend who she talks to the dead, and mm. she um, believe she has a lot of do spiritual. You, do you think she does? Eh. But the bigger thing is, is that she grew up in a mortuary. Oh funeral home. Jesus Christ! And if I did that, I would be dead right now. She I would have had a heart but attack. But she also, um, she likes to go to bars and she smokes, smokes and drinks, and goes to bars. Smokes what? Just cigarettes, hmm. but not meth. That's good. No, but her her um, kind of explanation is is that typically when spirits have a harder time going to the next level or wherever hmm. they need to go, this is her words, not mine. Sure, is that as they're trying to pass into another life, they get stuck in a little bit of like a limbo, hmm. and typically they go to people who have that lifestyle of drinking and smoking, and that they're more open to accepting communication oh. and so she helps them get to the other side okay I'm telling you I am fucking mother fucking Pollyanna I have a positive spin that. for anything <laughs> I can see that uh, I, I can know. find a way <laughs> I don't know I, so you're right if you look at the, so have you ever seen like when um, when people on YouTube will take like a movie preview and change the music in the background. I <laughs> love it. All of a sudden it can go from a horror film to like a love story. Yes. Or like a love yeah. story to yeah. like a comedy. That's, that's like, me. Like those are hilarious. Yeah. I, and so, I mean, it clearly, a lot of the shit is like, what is the sixth sense trying to make me feel? And I think I just, as an 11 year old, I followed you everything that they were trying very to. Lens. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so you saw I was with eleven year old eyes. I was ter- I, I saw because you see this vivid imagery of mm-hmm. people of ghosts hanging from nooses, a ghost yeah. who had cut themselves, a ghost who was throwing up because they were dr- eating these pills that their mom forced yes. them. Like that shit fucked an eleven year old up. Yeah. Versus maybe someone who has a bit more of a, a better view on life at that point, they're like, Well, you know what? Maybe this, these people just need help. Yeah. I can help you. Yeah. I can save them. Oh my gosh. Really <laughs> I can save you. I'm such a Pollyanna. All right, dude. I have talked so much. Yeah. Well, it was amazing. Thank you. And I really appreciate you coming by. Because oh, you're only down you. here all the time. <laughs> um, our buddy, in the words of Jason, why are you here all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Is he going to kick you out? No. Right. He loves me. Okay. Well... We should probably wrap this up because yes. it's going on two hours. But My God, nobody's going to listen because it's so long. I don't know. Some people are bored. <laughs> I hope so. I hope a lot of people are bored. You're the best. Thank you so much for having me. Nope. This is way more fun than I ever even imagined. Thank you. I was nervous that it wasn't going to be um, entertaining. I don't care if it is to everybody else, but it was to me. Well, that's really the entire purpose. <laughs> Fuck everyone if they don't enjoy yeah. it. So here's the only thing. Homework. Yeah. Because you're going to be on again. Awesome. <gasps> I get to come back? You have to. No, I'm going to force you to. Okay. You, this Can't isn't wait. like a privilege. You have to. I will. You have to watch the birds. <gasps> oh, come on. Okay, come I on. will. I promise. I you promise. can watch it on a plane if you want to. <laughs> no. No, I, I will watch it. You got to watch the birds. It might help. It could. You might come back and be like, birds are the best. It might be 
be like, oh, I get what they're saying. Birds aren't that bad. Maybe you'll Pollyanna and be like, the birds yeah. were being <laughs> fucked with. Yes. Like, the people were the problem. <laughs> yes. I think I might be able to spin that. I awesome. Think, I think you did. And nice work. A shout out to Blaine. Great help on this podcast booth. Th- thank you so much for shouting out Blaine, because I always feel like I have to turn it. Like People are like, wow, you built a really no, great podcast. I know it was Everyone Blaine. Everyone knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're Facebook friends. You saw the pictures. Yeah. It wasn't me. It was Blaine. I saw it. Yeah. And nice work on Zombie for sleeping the whole time. I think he moved around a little. I heard a couple of snores, though. Yeah, it's He's all right. great. All right. I blame it on you. Thank you so much, Stu. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. for coming. Thanks, folks. See ya. This is my podcast. This is my podcast. This is my podcast.